At the same time, let us also recognize the same responsibility to reach out to protect our frail elderly and to assist those with disabilities. With a With a real commitment from all of us, today's dream of a drug-free Iowa where our most vulnerable populations have access to basic and quality health care will build stronger communities for tomorrow's Iowa. Today in Iowa, hundreds of Iowa's best farmers and hundreds of Iowa's best workers face a tomorrow of real uncertainty. Let us promise today that we will not forget their struggle. Let us pledge today that we will act swiftly and decisively to help when and where help is needed most. Changes in agriculture, <laughs> changes in agriculture and expanding opportunities in our commercial centers creates an economic development challenge and opportunity. We often speak of if there were two Iowas, one rural and one urban. But if we are to thrive, we must do so as one, and we will do so as one. Combining, <laughs> combining our rich soil, our strong work ethic, and our quality education system, we can unleash the economic power of every kernel of corn and every soybean grown in our fields. As the food capital of the world, we can add real value to our crops open up new markets in the state and give hope to our farmers. At the same time, watching live News Channel 8 coverage of Iowa's inaugural ceremonies live at the in Veterans Auditorium. We will be joining the young and the restless as soon as the new governor's speech is over. Processing and manufacturing for marketing that creates the opportunity for high-tech, high-paying jobs in our commercial centers and surrounding communities. With a real commitment from all of us, Today's dream of Iowa as the food capital will build a brighter economic future in tomorrow's Iowa. With a sense of hope and excitement, we enter a new century with the development of a new economy, not built solely on the strength of our bodies, but more on the power of our intellect. Iowa is poised to take real advantage of that new economy and to offer businesses and industries that locate here the promise of long-term profitability built on the quality of our workers and our long-term investment in their continued education. Our population is stable, but to realize the promise of the future, we must be able to retain and attract young people to our state. Let me start by inviting my own son Jess and Doug, to make Iowa their lifetime home, and to encourage you <laughs> and to encourage you to invite the children of our state to be part of its future, Jess and Doug, and to all of the young people of this state, I say, we need you. Our state's Our state's future depends upon your intellect, your creativity, your energy. I realize that if young people are to stay or come back home, we must do our part before we ask them to do their part. We must invest in schools. We must support the arts. We must expand cultural diversity and opportunity. We must recognize the importance of recreation. Let us seal that bargain today for a better Iowa tomorrow. <laughs> to the members of the General Assembly, let me repeat what Governor Harold Hughes said in his first inaugural address. And I quote, as we meet, the question uppermost in the minds of the citizens we represent is whether or not you of the legislature with a substantial majority and I, the Democratic governor, can work together to develop a constructive legislative program for the good of the state. As I see it, we have no choice if we are to keep faith 
with our oaths of office. Our Constitution states that all political power is inherent in the people. The people of Iowa elected a Democratic governor. They elected a large Republican majority in both houses of the Assembly. They expect us to do our jobs regardless of party labels. He went on to say, yet now the campaign is over and we proceed to the constructive tasks of legislation and administration. It is worth noting that the differences that divide us as partisans are small by comparison with the common ground that unites us as fellow Iowans. We want a better, more progressive, more prosperous Iowa. To attain it, we must seek both unity and continuity in government." End quote. I believe Governor Hughes said it as well as it could be said. A better, more progressive, more prosperous Iowa will not evolve by and through government alone. We must have a clear vision of the Iowa of the future. How would each of us answer the question, what should Iowa be in the year 2020? What kind of state do we want and do we need? We must ask these questions now, and we must answer them thoughtfully now for a better Iowa. We must challenge the status quo. We must strategically plan our future. Future success will require a partnership with the private sector and the nonprofit sector to achieve our common goal. Building and creating these relationships and partnerships can make a real difference. Lieutenant Governor Peterson knows how to build such partnerships. And we will work together, drawing on our collective experiences to move Iowa forward. 23 years ago, I followed my heart to Iowa, and now my heart and my soul belong to our state. As someone for whom life started in an orphanage in Pennsylvania, I have been privileged to be a husband, a father, a lawyer, a mayor, and a state senator. It is an extraordinary honor to stand here as your governor. <coughs> embraced by the family and the community. <laughs> embraced by the family and the community we all call Iowa. Let us work together for a better Iowa. Let us not forget that Iowa is great because Iowa is good. Let us make today's dreams tomorrow's Iowa. If we do, we can again say what was said by Samuel Kirkwood more than 100 years ago. Iowa, our eyes have been permitted to behold only the beginnings of her glory. Thank God, and thank you, and God bless you all. And there you have it, Governor Tom Vilsack's vision for the future of Iowa as he sees it for the years ahead for his administration, emphasizing the, emphasizing the, um, the themes that we heard so often during his uh, campaign, a special emphasis on the area of education. He wants Iowa to be a leader in education, known the world through for the best education from, uh, from Preschool to graduate school, I believe, is the way he put it. He also talked a little bit about the challenges that face Iowa concerning agriculture, the environment, and uh, the drug use and the drug abuse that we have in this state. They were expecting about 3,000 people here today, and we've heard that the official count is more like 5,500. So very well received today and of course this is the big event but more happening I was going to say you have, you have the whole rundown here don't you as far as what's well, coming here, up here <laughs> of course I pay attention to the taste of Iowa they're going that happens at 2:30. Uh, they will be uh, having a 
taste and dance and all sorts of thing and then parties galore tonight an open house at the state house this afternoon and an open house at terrace hill tomorrow that's right all the balls coming up and uh we'll of course have coverage for those uh, uh for you of those coming up on news channel 8 broadcasts throughout the evening tonight and over the weekend as well for now however this is kevin cooney along with jeanette trumpeter that is uh, pretty much wrapping up the ceremonies here as iowa has a new governor and lieutenant governor we now turn you over to regular programming and the young and the restless thanks for joining us